It's a pleasure for me to be here. And today, I will talk about the global geometry of sphere-constrained sparse blend deconvolution. So the natural formulation for this problem is non-convex, which is challenging for both theory and computation. And in this talk, I will show you that once we cast a problem in the right sphere, and then we have the good geometry that every local minimum is good, so that we can, we can e extract sufficient information to recover the ground truth. So blend, decon blend deconvolution is a fundamental and recurring problem across several fields. In computer vision, the most familiar example is image deblurring, where we model the blurred image due to camera shakes as a convolution of the underlying, underlying natural image and some blur kernel. And the, the, the inverse problem of finding the original image is a blend deconvolution problem. And this is also important in a lot of scientific data analysis. Here I show an example of microscopy image. Here your observation is multiple copy of the unknown signature pattern. And you want to recover the signature pattern as, their, as well as their location. And they are both important for understanding the, the property of the material. And this is similar to the case for neural spec sorting. This is a one dimensional blend deconvolution problem. And for this scientific analysis, and the exact recovery of the ground truth is very important. So if we just think about all the application we mentioned above, there is a common notion of sparsity in the underlying signal. For the scientific signals, the sparsity is more, more direct. It's in the spatial domain, where you only observe a sparse copies of the signature pattern. And in image deblurring, as natural images are not sparse, it's always sparse in the gradient domain. So we have a sparsity in the, in the gradient domain. So the problem we want to formulate here is, so we are interested in the sparse blend convolution problem. Your observation is a convolution of the, some kernel and a, and a sparse signal x0. And we want to know, is it possible for us to recover both two signals? We want to know, is this problem well posed? And also, if, the, if so, we want to know, do we have an algorithm can efficiently and reliably rec recover both two signals? So this is a very hard problem. And the major difficulty comes from the, those symmetric solutions. This is the intrinsic property with the convolutional operator. It has nothing to do with the formulation. And there are basically two groups of symmetry. One is scale and sense symmetry. That means it, you can scale one signal by alpha and scale another signal by one lower alpha. And there, the convolution doesn't change. And the other group of symmetry is shift symmetry. It says that you can shift two signals into opposite directions, and their convolution remains the same. So you also can notice that no matter where we're going to scale a signal or shift a signal, the sparsity of the signal doesn't change. So it says that if we shift a signal or, or just uh, scale a signal, they are, we are going to create a large group of equivalent solutions. And this is what, what's making this problem hard. Because every time we have a symmetric solution, we are going to have a local minimum. And we are going to have a very complicated geometry to deal with. And in this talk, I will show you that if we formulate the problem in the right way, then every local minimum we can find in this function is actually good. And we can use the information in that local minima to find the ground truth. Here I will talk about how we do it. So we are going to consider the sphere constrained sparse blend deconvolution. By the sphere, I mean that I'm going to, have, going to assume the A0 to have units for business norm. And then we are going to minimize the lasso form function if it's not familiar with you. It's a basically a weighted summation of the approximation from the, from the convolution and some sparsity measure of the underlying signal. And I also plot the, the objective value on the sphere in the left. You can see that there are two blue blobs. That's two local minima we can see. And this is non-convex, as we mentioned. But if you look at those local minima carefully, you will find out they are actually near the shift truncation of the ground truth. So I should also show an example on the right. So on the top, we have the, local, we have the ground truth. And the bottom one is one local minimum we found. And you can see that this is not ground truth, for sure. It's very close. It's a shift truncation of the ground truth. And you can see this as the effect of the shift symmetry we mentioned earlier. So we shift the two signals. At some point, we begin to lose the boundary entries of one of the signals. But the approximation is still good enough to the original one. OK. We can still corroborate this observation with some theory. For this kind of problem, doing theory is very hard. 
So we, we consider some idealization. Here we are going to neglect the higher order quadratic inter interactions of A. And this approximation is fine as it's, it's, it's accurate for most A on the sphere. And then we have this simplified form. And then for this one, we can show that if your, your sparse signal is sparse enough, and your lambda is set large enough to, to encourage sparsity, then the average local minima of this function is shift to truncation of the ground truth. So this motivates a natural algorithm, where we just first, first try to find one of the local mean. We do it for a random, random initialization here, so that's kind of clean. And we need to set the lambda enough, big enough, as we mentioned earlier. And the second step will be try to find the global, out, global optimal from this local minimum. How we did that is by zero padding this, this shift truncation. And by, by essentially increase the dimension of this shift truncation, we give the optimization algorithm enough freedom to fill in the missing entries that we truncated away. And this algorithm seems to perform well on the, on the applications we mentioned earlier. So here I show you an example from microscopy data analysis. The middle one is the observation. It's a convolution of the left signals. An algorithm can recover the signal up to some shift. And in image deblurring, the notion of sparsity is in the gradient domain. So we need to modify the algorithm a little. But again, you can see that we can recover the truth up to some shift. So we also did some more extensive setting for, di different, for different cases in image deblurring. It's kind of surprising that once we cast a problem on a sphere, and then we have the dry geometry, in this way, we can explore the sparsity prior, and then we have some surprising competitive results. And then we, our algorithm can also explain the, the observation of the, of the difference between sphere and simplex sparse blend deconvolution. So image, image blurring, we know that the more natural model for the blur kernel is, is a simplex, as it's a better capture the camera shake. But however, this is, this is a challenge for computation, as there is a sparse minimizer that the A is just spike, and the recovered X is not actually sparse. So in contrary, once we cast it on the sphere, which is less than the natural model for, from the modeling perspective, but the geometry is actually better, and the algorithm is better. So another extension of blend deconvolution is convolutional dictionary learning. Here, the situation is more complicated. We have the observation of multiple convolutional kernels. And the, 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 the underlying difficulty is kind of the same. So we have the large group of symmetric solutions due to skill, skill symmetry and the shift symmetry. But the situation is even worse, as we have multiple copies of them. But we can see that our algorithm and the geometric inside actually can be carried through to this case. Here I show two examples on both synthetic data and real data. And the first stage of the algorithm can find the local minimum of the ground truth, which is shift truncation of the ground truth. And the second one, we can recover the ground truth in some higher dimensional, higher dimensional space with some, some shift. OK. So the main message I want to send through this talk is that once we cast the problem in the right sphere, and then we have the, we have the good geometry that all the local optima are good, so that we have an algorithm can, can recover the ground truth from the information offered in each local optima. We show you some simulations and experiments to show this. And we also have, an, uh, we also have a theory, which is kind of suboptimal. We only show that it only works for when the A is sufficient sparse. So one thing we are trying to focus on is try to pursue stronger theoretical results. We want to show it for more complicated cases. Say there are, more, more, there are some non-trivial overlapping. And there are a lot of uh, some other parametric models we want to explore. Say sometimes A, A is dependent on a few parameters. And another thing we want to understand is so what's the connection to convolution and neural, neural network? Since we have now some geometric insight about this small, clean, and well-defined problem, can we have some insight for the algorithm or the theory in that case? And this closes my talk today. Thank you for your attention.